Hey guys, Sasha for netbooknews.com with the new Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1. We did already the unboxing a little bit earlier and finally uh, we can take a look at the honeycomb version that Samsung is using for the Galaxy Tab and uh, definitely can take a look at the default apps. So obviously I've been booting up the system already and that's how it looks like. So just use a different wallpaper. Um, in terms of customization, if I compare this, for example, to the ePad Transformer, where they changed all these home buttons and where they had their own widgets, it looks like a plain Android Honeycomb. And uh, let's take a look what kind of Android Honeycomb it is. Uh, where are the settings? Over here we go. And let's click to About Tablet. It's Android 3.1. Here we go. Okay. So, what about the performance of it? Um, in general, it feels very smooth. If I compare this, for example, to the EPA Transformer and Iconic Tab, I also have one of these with me here. Um, even though that you might complain about this, that I have so many apps installed on the EPA Transformer and Iconic Tab, actually, I synced my Google account with the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1 or earlier and it's been downloading all the apps and it was still super smooth so um, that's pretty decent and it's by far the fastest Android Honeycomb tablet that I had in my hands so far. Um, besides that what about uh, pre-installed application? Um, the Pulse Newsreader is pre-installed over here. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this but uh, it just gives you a couple of different RSS feeds here and still can you see that? It's kind of sluggish when you're running it under uh, Android 3.1 uh, compared to this app on the Apple iPad 2. This is definitely a huge difference and I think they really need to work on this. Uh, what else do we have here? Well, the Pulse Reader Quick Office is pre-installed and then we have something called Samsung App. You know what the funny thing was? Um, when I opened it for the first time They've been asking, or they've been telling me that there's an update available for the Samsung app. So I wanted to install the update, and then it told me it blocked the download of the application because I haven't allowed third-party application or, uh, or application outside of the Android marketplace to get installed on this device. So uh, well, Samsung should have really taken care of this to set up the rights uh, in the settings of this tablet to make sure that at least the Samsung app application their own little marketplace can receive updates well obviously I did this manually and uh, that's how it looks like well what is it it is just their own little marketplace with like 30 apps and they're all uh, tablet related but still do I need this hmm not sure do I want this well maybe not because I can also click on the Android marketplace and I'm getting the, the featured tablet apps uh, right on the uh, on the top of the page, so yeah, I think it's it's just it's just a waste of resources. Or I'm not sure what they want to do with this. If this is becoming the new Samsung Hub, and if they're getting more reviewed and kind of filtered applications for the Samsung Galaxy Tab in there. Anyways, I still believe you know the Android Marketplace is absolutely fine for your tablet. <coughs> Sorry. So um, besides that. Uh, Let's take a look at the browser performance. So I've opened up a page over here. And uh, let's do a little double click to zoom. That's very smooth. How about a pinch to zoom? Here we go. That's no problem at all. And yeah, the scrolling is very smooth. Uh, it's rendering fast. And yeah, the performance is great when you're surfing the internet. And the display, 1280 by 800 is a resolution, it's an IPS display. So uh, in terms of the colors, in terms of the viewing angles, let me just uh, zoom out a little bit. It's just a great little device. You see that? That's pretty decent. Hey guys, it's super light, it's super thin. I really, really like this device. I think it's by far the best Android tablet that I ever had in my hands. The performance is great. Uh, what I can't show you anything about the uh, camera quality right now. It's a 1.3 camera on the front, of a 5 megapixel camera on the back. Well, I'm pretty sure that you don't want to run around and do, uh, you know, 
pictures with a 10 inch device but if you want to I'm sure that um, the build quality is okay if you compare this to a real camera of course but should be fine for video chatting and uh, you, know, you know what that's it pretty much maybe I can tell you a little bit about the battery life I'd say between 9 and 10 hours depending on what you are doing um, with Wi-Fi on, casual browsing, doing a little bit of gaming, watch some videos, you know, you will you will end up with between in between nine and ten hours. So if you're really looking for a very cool Android tablet, if you want to get the thinnest tablet that is on the market, if you want to get the lightest tablet that is on the market, take a look at the Samsung Galaxy Tab. But also be aware that you have to pay a premium for this. So this costs about fifty dollars more than the Apple iPad 2. Both 16 gigabyte, both Wi-Fi, Apple iPad 2, 499, Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1, 549. So you need to decide if this is worth the money. I think it is a fantastic device. Um, the finish feels really good. Um, it's light, it's easy to hold, and it just looks good. It's also a kind of design statement. So this is the new Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1. I'm Sasha for AppleNews.com. Thanks for watching.